All right, well, welcome, everyone. Um, we're really sorry uh, Gina Raimondo couldn't make it today, but my sincere hope is that she will manage to keep all of us doing our necessary work here <laughs> with her duties in Washington. Um, so good afternoon. I'm Jeff Brock. I'm the Dean of the School of Engineering and Applied Science. And it gives me great pleasure to, uh, to bring today the second of our series in the Dean's Invited Speaker Series. Um, these are a new series that we've inaugurated to try to bring uh, members of our community, the larger Yale community, who are highly placed in industry into conversation with all of you and with the larger Yale community. Um, so many of our alums have made their way to the top of the industrial world in one role or another. They have incredible stories and, you know, our guest today really emblematizes that probably more than any of our alums. Um, <clears throat> so I'm really pleased to welcome C.C. Wei, who joins us in part, in addition to this grand event, to receive the Wilbur Cross Medal this evening from the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences. Uh, let's give a round of applause for that. So just a couple of words about CC's trajectory. He was, he received his graduate degree, his PhD, here in the 1980s, uh, just before I arrived on campus. We just missed each other. Um, and uh, he then went on to a role as a research scientist and working at uh, Texas Instruments Semiconductor Corporation. Ultimately found his way to leading uh, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, or TSMC, which has been in the news and which you no doubt have heard of if you're here. Um, so I won't go through all of the twists and turns of his career and the other academic institutions which may deserve some measure of credit for his arriving at this, uh, at this sort of pinnacle uh, in industry. Um, but really, my goal is to have just a, an easy conversation with uh, Dr. Wei here and to hear about some recent uh, collaboration that he has been involved in with the United States and how that reflects uh, his worldview. Um, and so, you know, we'll just engage in about 25 minutes or so of conversation. And then I'm eager to open it up to this wonderful crowd. And thank you again all for coming. Now let me welcome C.C. Wei. Okay. Now, maybe you'll turn down the volume for a minute so we can open our Diet Cokes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, so. Um, I have the honor and privilege of opening it up here today, but I guess I'm just curious how you came to Yale, how you saw Yale as a, as a direction you wanted to pursue, and what you think it gave you in terms of your trajectory forward. That's a good question. You are wearing uh, a Yale tie, so it must have meant something to you. Uh, well, starting with this tie. Um, <laughs> This is the only chance I can wear a tie with proud. I mean, that's a, <laughs> you know, if I wear this one in my company, uh, a lot of people will protest, you know, <laughs> because they graduate from the different school. They think, uh, you know, they are the best. Uh, anyway, here, here is the best. <laughs> uh, <laughs> look, why, why I join here? Uh, it's interesting. This is because of its a name brand. You know that what is called name brand, uh, the Harvard, Yale, and uh, Stanford, MIT. Those are the name brand. Uh, so when I receive, I apply in many schools uh, when I want to uh, have a graduate study. And uh, one day I received the admission, and uh, I still waiting for other schools to give me the reply. But then my family, my brother especially, he said, hey, young brother, 
This is a Yale. Is that the same as in the newspaper? Is a Harvard Yale? I say yes. He said, then why, what are you waiting for? Just go over there. I mean, I say, well, you know, I'm still waiting for Carnegie Mellon or those kind of a school. He said, what the Mellon? Mellon is a, is a fruit. <laughs> Don't go over there. So, uh, well, I accept the yield. But joke aside, actually, uh, Professor Ma is one of the reasons that I decided to join Yale. And uh, because of I have uh, my uh, school uh, professor, uh, Dr. Xi Wai Wu, he's a classmate of uh, Professor Ma. And uh, I think that Professor Wu is a nice professor, then Professor Ma must be as good as him. Uh, in fact, it's a better, it's the best. And I learned a lot from uh, Professor Ma. And uh, today, Professor Ma's wife is here, and I'm grateful to them. Uh, Ping Fong? Yes, sir. <laughs> and then to tell you the truth, uh, when I was, uh, you know, studying in Yale, uh, it's an endless work, a lot of pressure, and a long working hour. So I uh, thought, say, hey, this is the hair of my life. I, I need to get out as quickly as possible. <laughs> <laughs> and I tried, but, you know, I failed, of course. Uh, you, you still have to stay five years and something like that. And in between, I uh, talked to uh, Professor Parker. Uh, we are in the same group. I say, uh, I say, Professor Parker, how can I get out quickly? Then he looked at me, he said, you don't, you don't get out. Uh, have you ever enjoyed Yale? I said, how to enjoy Yale? Yeah. <laughs> you know, in, uh, in my life, it's the head and heart the hall, the tunnel to uh, Beckton Center, the, way, the life in Beckton Center, and never ending. Uh, so he looked at me, he said, have you ever listened to any speech in the law school? I said, what the hell, I, wh why I need to? <laughs> I want to graduate, that's all, right? I mean, that's, uh, you know, so he did not give me the right answer. So I have to be patient. But finally, finally, what I got from a year, I uh, got a PhD degree. But I also very proud to uh, meet uh, one young lady that I fell in love with, and then uh, finally become my wife. Uh, my wife is here, Jessica. And then with her, I have uh, three uh, lovely kids, okay? One of them is uh, with me, Terry. Uh, <laughs> okay, I tell you the truth, I got what I want. I have a degree, I have my wife, and then, uh, you know, the life goes on, right? And uh, I thought that would be a rosy picture ahead, but actually, it's not. If you work on the semiconductor industry, you have to work hard. Uh, it's by nature, because of uh, this semiconductor is a very important industry. Finally, we knew that, but you know, 40 years ago, it's not. You know, 40 years ago, uh, double E is not so, uh, let me say that, it's not so popular. Uh, now today, is more important. Okay, I got all my story in here. <laughs> so I was telling CC, CC earlier that semiconductors are hot. Look at the uh, presence here today. Um, so what would you say about the kind of the American culture resonates with you in terms of developing um, creativity, productivity? Why might you be inclined to work with the U.S. government to, to develop this partnership? That's a good question. Uh, actually, there's a lot of rumor say that uh, TSMC had been pressured by the uh, U.S. government to come to the uh, U.S. to build a fair. To tell the truth, it's not really that story. In Taiwan, we start to see the limitation 
of uh, the number one limitation that in Taiwan I, I have is a talented people. The limitation of amount of talent people. And uh, to tell the truth, US is a, is a country that with the most innovative talented people here, uh, like you guys are, okay? Uh, very innovative, uh, very uh, kind of a wild dream driven uh, uh, people, and uh, especially for the Ivy League student, they're always being trained to be the leader. So you guys don't think something small. You will be the leader in your industry, in your career one day. And so now talk about why TSMC want to build a fire in the US. Simple, because the US will have a huge amount of talent people that I can look for. And we can have some select of the talent people to join TSMC uh, in US. At the same time, the US also think about, the government also think about the semiconductor is very important. It indeed is very important because this is a semiconductor is the center of every technology. You name it. In the future, you name it. You want to have a, have a, a more advanced in uh, medical care, you need a semiconductor. You want to have uh, autonomous driving, you need, you need a semiconductor. You want to have an AI application in every industry, you need a semiconductor. So US government suddenly realized that. I say suddenly because uh, they never talk with them with the TSMC, now they talk very often. <laughs> uh, so I uh, actually, I expect to uh, have a uh, same occasion that uh, Secretary Romando here. Um, but anyway, so finally, um, I mean, why we choose US? It's not we choose US, this is a natural choice because uh, you need the talented people here. Okay, and uh, by the way, U.S. government also promised to help TSMC to build the fab in Arizona. So we choose it, we like it, and uh, we have some problem. No doubt, you just read the newspaper. But then we will overcome all those kind of things. We took it as a, as a kind of a learning cycle, and then we are going to build more fab in the U.S. And welcome you guys to join, by the way. <laughs> so you mentioned the um, characteristics of the undergraduates and other and graduate students that we train uh, in terms of leadership. What would you see as challenges that universities face now in terms of technical training? What kinds of techniques should we be emphasizing in terms of curriculum? Technical. That's uh, interesting. I never touched that area for more than 10 years. Uh, <laughs> you know, now all the days I use my deep service. Uh, Same here, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we sit here. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, my wife joked with me, say that uh, if I cannot speak it out, I can ask my, uh, my kids to help me uh, to deliver the, uh, the speech. Um, in undergraduate, I, let me use one joke. Uh, one time I talked with uh, Professor Barker. So Professor Barker said that uh, as a professor, he has to treat the undergraduate student very well because most of them will be the leader in the industry uh, for the good student when you have a good track record. Uh, when the student have a good track record, they will become professor, so they will become his colleagues. So deal with them politely. <laughs> when the student with a bad record, uh, the bad score, they will be the industry leader. They will, <laughs> they will donate money to the school, so be nice to them also. <laughs> For those graduate students, ignore them because of, uh, you know, they are useless uh, sometimes. <laughs> Okay, 
Now, joker side, um, I would think the best IV league, so uh, the school, actually to train the future leader. That's very important. I'm not very good at uh, technical, to be frank with you. I'm a mediocre student. Uh, when Professor Ma gave me the score, it's a mediocre. I mean, uh, so <laughs> I'm the one that graduated, but uh, you know, this school, the Yale, this school, will train the future leader. You look at how many of US president we have from this school. We are the best in the law school, right? Uh, engineering, I don't know. I mean, that's We're getting, I, we're getting uh, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. But then we will be the leaders in the industry. You know, look at me. I don't need to have a very good score, but you know, I still can be the leader. Yeah. Don't worry, you will get it. Uh, by the way, the trick is that you have to live longer. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> so stay healthy. OK, so you've teed up my next question, which is, at what point when you were working through your career did you see opportunities for leadership? What made you choose to head in that direction as opposed to research and engineering? Well, the answer is very simple. I'm not good at research. <laughs> So by nature, you have to choose another route, right? Uh, to be frank with you, uh, in my career, we had to be humble. Uh, we had to be humble during my whole career. So I know a lot of talented people. They can do much better work than me in terms of technical. Uh, but I'm not too bad either, by the way. Okay, <laughs> I have. A, few papers and uh, about uh, 30 to 40 uh, uh, patent, 30 to 40 papers and speeches, but then I'm not the very best of it. However, during your career, you continue to be humble, uh, humility, and uh, you have to be uh, love what you have doing with your work. That's a trick. That's a trick. You got to be happy. Only when you are happy, you can work hard. But how to become happy, how you are going to uh, love your work? You have to find the pleasure inside your work. That's a trick. If you cannot find the pleasure, don't do it. You know, change to another company or change your boss. I don't know, uh, usually. <laughs> uh, but in reality, you cannot change your boss, right? So uh, you try to find some pleasure with uh, your work, and then you will become happy, and then you work hard. I, I always believe that everybody's a wisdom almost equal. You are not much smarter than other people. But working hard, enjoy it, and then you can walk all the way through. And by nature, you will become uh, the leader of the, your group, and then become the leader of a bigger group, and become the leader of a company, like, like me right now. Um, you know, to be frank with you, I am lucky all the time, whether you believe it or not. So you know, your advisor, uh, T.P. Ma, was one of these larger-than-life sort of warm personas, and, and we miss him dearly. Probably there were nevertheless moments when you had doubts about your chosen direction, as we all do as graduate students. What were the things that kept you going? What can you offer this group in terms of motivation for the, the hard moments? Yes, one motivation, because of when I was a graduate student, the life is tough, right? I mean, that's I had to work uh, for a long hour all the way to the night. So uh, the motivation is to get out of this school as quickly as possible. <laughs> <laughs> and then I will have a better life, right? Yeah. Uh, 
The same motivation that when I was working in TI, I'm an engineer, so I say, what, what, I, what I am doing, I still work day and night. So I want to be promoted to manager so I will have a better life. <laughs> so once I get the manager's uh, managerial job, I say, oh boy, I got to be a VP so then I can relax. Uh, so I was a VP in, uh, in TSMC. Then I found out, God, boy, I work for a very top boss, Dr. Morris Chen. So I say, oh boy, I mean, that's a, I got to uh, be a CEO to get rid of uh, that's a <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> and then I start to regret that, I, that the nightmare never disappear. Uh, so motivation, motivation is uh, usually you think the future is better, but uh, uh, <laughs> it's not really. Uh, <laughs> So just give you a good advice, okay, guys? Uh, be realized that in your life, you always have a dream, and the dream come true, but not the same dream as you have. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's, that's what I wanted to ask our friend, but I'm sure you have many questions you might want to uh, pose to CC. I don't know if there are any, any hands. Anyone want to raise a question? Yeah, over here. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, the vast majority of US military planes have Taiwanese chips in them. Um, and the semiconductors were made in your company. And I'm just wondering um, where you think the supply lines for um, these chips will evolve in the coming years. You, you, can, you can either <laughs> agree or decline to answer this. <laughs> That's an interesting question that I uh, don't have a perfect answer. I mean, that uh, you are talking about uh, uh, like the US government official talking to me, that, uh, you know, uh, this is a uh, related to the national security or related to the resilience of the uh, supply to the US. Uh, to be frank with you, in my point of view, uh, this semiconductor industry is uh, globalized. Uh, every country doing what he can do the best. Uh, but among them, the biggest uh, let me say that the biggest, the strongest country in semiconductor industry is the USA. Okay, you guys don't get misled by the newspaper, by uh, all the uh, rumors say that uh, all manufacturing in Taiwan is uh, very good and uh, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. The strongest country in semiconductor industry is USA. Now, the US is kind of uh, putting manufacturing aside for a while. But if US decide to pick it up quickly, they will. And why I say the strongest uh, country in semiconductor industry is because of uh, all the process, all the technology development, you need the very advanced tools. And all the advanced tools originated or being manufactured in the US. That's where it becomes the strongest. I use in the photo recycle as a one of the example. Uh, today, the most advanced photo recycle tool is a EUV. Uh, does anybody know what's called EUV? That's all, and all other people didn't know? Okay, now, let's say, anybody who did not understand UV stands for, uh, except my wife, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, good. I mean, that's, a, that's kind of a very uh, small wavelength tools, and the central part of the UV is in the US, the light source. 
the light source to generate such kind of a very short wavelength is from the US. No doubt about it. And uh, using TSMC as an example, I use a lot of uh, prime materials uh, tools. I use a lot of uh, them research tool and KRA Tenko and a lot of it. And uh, a lot of uh, software from uh, uh, like a mental graphic or now it become a Siemens or K um, okay, I forgot their name. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> but Cadence and then uh, Simnosis and uh, those guys, those are from US. Without them, you cannot de develop or you cannot design any product. So uh, uh, part of the reason I can answer uh, Jeff's question, why choose US as a partner? Of course, this is the best country for the semiconductor industry. What years I can choose? So if I have a, have a, cho have a choice, US is the number one place. I will choose. To produce enough chips inside US uh, takes time. Okay, so be patient. <laughs> That's the same answer I answer that the US uh, government officials. <laughs> be patient. Be patient. Okay, uh, there's another one over here. Hi, um, I'm Frank. So uh, my question is, um, even though US is you know, one of the more higher tech countries in the world, what made Taiwan such a uh, fertile ecosystem for TSMC to develop there versus being in the US originally? Oh, you're talking about the ecosystem for the whole manufacturing of the semiconductor? Uh, the same answer, be patient. <laughs> it takes time to build up, right? I mean, that uh, TSMC has been in Taiwan for 30 years. Uh, the whole ecosystem, including uh, to set up a building, to, to uh, set up a fab, uh, the construction worker, to be specific, and also the facility worker and everybody and also the chemical supply, the raw material supply, it takes Taiwan for more than 30 years to be mature. And so I would expect, uh, I don't think the US needs 30 years. Uh, uh, US is, can catch up quickly because of this is the best place in the world that uh, you have a, a lot of talented people. And all the key is uh, talented people. And so when the US decide to focus on the semiconductor manufacturing, it will be uh, catching up quickly. And, uh, you, but it takes time. It takes time. Not 30 years, of course. Much shorter than that. All right, next question. Uh, first, I want to say uh, thank you very much for coming. It's really a privilege to be able to listen to you. Uh, I also ask, uh, so since you made the, the transition from being an uh, engineer to a manager, uh, how did you know, like, do you, like, do you have any advice for being able to make that transition from managing circuits to managing people? And do you have any advice with regards to that? Tell the truth. Managing people is very tough. Uh, you might want to uh, read a book that's been written by uh, President Saraway. Uh, he is a guy who invented the uh, EQ. And uh, how to manage the people, please read uh, his book. Uh, mm -hmm. I regret a lot that I did not read his book and, be, and being promoted to a manager's uh, job. I like to manage the machine because they don't protest. <laughs> uh, Managing the people are very tough because of, uh, for example, if they are not have a quarrel with uh, his wife, then his, his temper becomes very bad. How did I know? I mean, that uh, yesterday he's uh, my nice, uh, good friend, and today he showed his face on me. So I don't understand that, so I uh, give him a hard time. Just so uh, usually you change from... Uh, technical role to become managerial role, 
you have to pay more attention to people's uh, daily life, which is a very dynamic. And so it's a very tough job. And so if you are a very good manager, uh, I always ask my guy, if you want to be promoted to be a manager, you got to get married. <laughs> you know how to manage your family, then you will become a good manager. <laughs> no joke. I, I tell them that if you are not married, I will not promote you to the manager. Um, if and how do you see TSMC essential in countering China's rising global um, technological influence and semiconductor industry? The question is, uh, from my point of view, to look at uh, how uh, China I don't make a public comment on China, by the way. <laughs> to be frank with you guys, I was not allowed to uh, give a speech uh, without go through my legal department. So I prepared no foyer because they say that the CC you probably have a big mouth, so uh, we, don't, <laughs> we don't allow you to talk about something uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then finally I decide I have to keep silent. Uh, so I don't make a comment on my customer. I don't make a comment on US China's uh, political confrontation. I don't make a comment on China. Uh, I have a lot of customers in China, by the way. Uh, they all use TSMC. And besides, uh, the one being put on the entity list was my second largest customer. And uh, I lost that. But anyway, uh, no, thank you. N no comment. <laughs> <laughs> OK, another one over here. Um, hi. Um, so I'm sure throughout your career you've had a lot of like mentors and sponsors. Um, I'm curious to hear like who some of them were and why you picked them out. I did not catch who, who some of your mentors were and why you sought them out. So I pretend I don't understand her question. <laughs> um, for the mental work, mentors. Yeah, like TP. So from the TP Ma, starting from TP Ma first, right? Uh, I learned a lot from all my mentors, per se. Uh, I have a four person in my life. Uh, the first one, TP Ma, I learned a lot because of a TP is smart and never be uh, harsh on me, even my. Uh, Academic work is a mediocre, but uh, <laughs> uh, of course, in uh, later days, uh, when I being uh, in the VP or senior VP or the CEO of uh, TSMC, TP Ma start to change his uh, 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 record on me so, and become better. Uh, <laughs> but actually, I learned uh, from TP on the very, uh, he's very patient and uh, very uh, kind of uh, instructive. And he also showed me how to write a good technical paper. Uh, that teach me a lot. And then after TP and the Professor Barker, after TP, I joined TSMC. And there's a talent uh, boss also. Uh, in TI, I have a. My uh, manager is called Roger Haken. Roger Haken, he passed away when he was very young. Um, but in the IEEE, IEDM has a best student paper award in name of uh, Roger Haken. So they called it a Roger Haken best uh, student award. 
uh, that tells you that uh, how important he is, uh, his achievement. It's very smart. Usually, do you know that in our life, before, okay, I tell you guys, after you graduate and join a company, you will start to write the weekly report. <laughs> and nice to be a CEO because I don't need to write a weekly report now. <laughs> okay, so I have a long time for, for more than uh, 30 years continue to write a weekly report. Roger Hagen is the one that never cut paste on my weekly report into his weekly report. Okay, he usually, he read my weekly report. If he did not understand, he called me into his office. And then uh, he asked me to sit right beside him and he start to uh, use his own, his own word to write the weekly and asked me to read it, say that this is exactly what you say. And he catch up the idea very quickly. And then uh, one day he become the senior fellow of, TS, uh, of TI. His job grade is higher than his boss, his boss's boss, and direct report to the TI president. So that tell you that how smart he is, and he also teach me a lot. He give me a lot of uh, uh, not instruction, but just say, why this one become like that? Why you did not see it? Oh my God! So I have to go back and work hard. Uh, Roger Hagen. But finally, I met with a very top one. If you want to call the mentor. Uh, Dr. Morris Chen, uh, he is a founder of a TSMC, and I learned from him a lot. But he is still around, so I don't want to make any comment. <laughs> <laughs> so you've spoken about AI and how your semiconductors are necessary for this. A woman in the front spoke about weapon systems and how semiconductors are also necessary for that. Do you think it's feasible to introduce greater tracking of where semiconductors are going, of what they're being used for? Semiconductor, uh, it's because of uh, US-China's confrontation, so become the center of that confrontation. But to be frank with you, without that, actually, finally, the people will realize that semiconductor is a, is a center portion of all technology, including whatever you want to name it, including uh, in our life, like uh, I like to use in the medical as a one example. I don't like to use in the military or some kind of a confrontation. Uh, in the medical, uh, in the medical field, uh, I want to make a joke of my wife. She only trusts the guy with the experience. Right? So when you see a doctor, you want to see an experienced doctor. Am I right? OK. But look at it. Um, to, to give you some idea, if a doctor is a 50 or 60 years old, are you going to let that guy to do the operation? <laughs> do you know that the people's uh, hand is not steady? Do you want to do the experiment, just hold a laser pointer to the wall and see how steady it is? <laughs> OK, now here comes a question. If you want to do the operation, with the, the, the hand is a, some kind of uncertainty, and then you let that doctor to cut it? Not me. I mean, that's a, you know, I will trust that. that uh, is everything controlled by the semiconductor, then I'll trust it. Okay, so in the future, I would like to say the surgery will be done by the machine. The machine is controlled by the semiconductor. That's one thing. And the other thing is uh, what is called experience. Experience, that means you learn a lot of uh, skill by years. And you have to remember, by the way. So. I would say that if you go to the hospital to see 
uh, you got the flu, so you, you tell the doctor, say, I got the flu, I have coughing, I have a running nose, and everything, blah, blah, blah. And so the doctor will say, okay, sit right there, measure your temperature, measure, measure your heartbeat, and then uh, be very patient with you for half, a, for half an hour, and then uh, write down some medicine for you. I don't need it. I just using the AI to collect all the flu example in this area, and then the AI will make a judgment, say that what the age you are is a, is a male or female, and what the symptom, what kind of a temperature, body temperature, what kind of heartbeat, what kind of a blah, blah, blah. And then they also look at, are you in New Haven? or you are in New York, or you are in Washington, D.C., and so the flu in that area of the people, the symptoms look like a what, and finally get a conclusion and write down the medicine for you, and the accuracy will be 90 or 95 percent. So you don't need a doctor. You just type into the computer, <laughs> and then 90 or 95 percent of accuracy, you still have 5 percent to 10 percent, right? Then you see a doctor. And then doctor say, it's not working for this one. And the computer asks it, so what years? Uh, uh, type it into. Uh, so the computer continue to remember, continue to educate itself. And so finally, I don't need a doctor to see when I, I have a flu, I don't need a doctor to do the, oper you know, to do the uh, operation surgery. I don't need a doctor to give me some advice, uh, like uh, I'm uh, overweight. And <laughs> the AI will tell me, say, Mr. Wei, you are overweight for five kilograms. You better to do the following. And whether I follow it or not, then I have to wear a smart watch. And then the watch will measure my heartbeat, measure my temperature, send it to a uh, computer, and computer give me a warning, say that uh, you are not listen to me, so you have better watch out. You only have uh, how many years to live? <laughs> then I'll get nervous, right? So I start to follow the... Uh, instruction. But anyway, in the future, semiconductor will be the key to in our life. Something like that. Uh, yeah. Okay, maybe we have time more. for one last question. Yeah. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> uh, first of all, thank you for the great talk and inspiring us. Uh, of course, uh, every process in the semiconductor Manufacturing is very important, but fast, fast decade people talk a lot about the uh, miniaturizing the semiconductor and integrate more and more chips inside of more and more transistor inside of the single chip. But it's a uh, like seven nanometer, five nanometer, three nanometer like that. But uh, now we will facing the limit of the miniaturizing the. Uh, process. So, what is your insight or prospect? Which process will attract people's attention after that miniaturizing and integration the transistors? Good question. Is there any? Actually, your question should separate into the. Is there any limitation at all? Okay, and what we are doing to deal with it? i give you a story. When I graduated from Yale, I joined a TI in 19, actually, at the beginning of 1985. Uh, I graduated in 1985, but, uh, you know, I want to work uh, quickly because I have a family to raise. So uh, at the beginning of 1985, I worked in TI. I read a paper published by the IBM. They call it one micron technology. And they say, you know, not for long that will reach the limitation. 
of the semiconductor device. Uh, if you look at it, look at it, look at the mean free path of your electron at a kind of different temperature, you'll find out if a channel length shorter than your mean free path, there's a lot of a limitation. There's a lot of a high electron. There's a lot of a physics inside. So they say, quickly, 0.35 micron is the end of the semiconductor technology. Okay, and since then, now today we are at three nanometer. And so the people ask me the same thing. We ask ourselves inside TSMC, is there any limitation? So what happened after three nanometer? You know, two nanometer. So what happened after two nanometer? 1.4, I tell you the truth. You just time by 0.7. It was, so, so one of the, one of the uh, occasion I answer the question, the people ask me, what happened after the 1.4 nanometer? I say one nanometer. And what happened after the one nanometer? Of course, 0.7, uh, something, <laughs> something like that. And they keep asking. And finally, my answer is, uh, why should I care? Because I retire already. <laughs> All right. Thank you again, CC. Thank you, guys. Pleasure. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Sir. Please welcome. <clears throat> enjoy some refreshments outside, and let's thank CC for here again. One last word: Don't forget to join TSMC after you graduate. <laughs> All right.